Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Channel Zero, Butcher's Block, Episode 5. It's called The Red Door. So, full spoilers for the episode. I wanted to put some dramatic effect onto that, <laughs> that title. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we left off with Alice taking the drink, kind of seemingly accepting the invitation into the family, into the, the, the Peach household, and... Mm -hmm. That's kind of where he left off. Oh, also, look, had his throat slipped by his father. But we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> that, was the other, that was arguably the most shocking of the two things. But the, but, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to lie. I thought this was another week episode. Or a week air episode. Yeah, I'm kind of checked out on this season. Uh, th this is the point where if there wasn't only one left, I'd be like, well, I don't know if I want to finish it at this point. Well, yeah, there's only one left, so we might, but may as well. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, see how it wraps up. Uh, I think it's kind of fascinating to watch a six episode season of something like this where episode one wasn't as good as the previous two seasons but there was enough in there that it was like oh, okay we'll see what it does see what, see what it goes and uh, also, two was better than one better than one it had some big moments and three likewise maybe not as good as two but still again had some big moments but basically from the moment that Alice went through that door um, through the bit, looking glass so to speak yeah, go back to the old metaphor. But as soon as, soon as she went through that door, and we're in the, the, the heaven, dream, demon world with the house and the family, it, most of this has been kind of boring. It just feels like abstract imagery for the sake of it. And about that, 80% of the time. Yeah, there's the odd little moment of brilliance. There's the odd little moment. Like, I actually think the demon god thing they actually worship, like when we see him like coming out of the dark a little bit in the distance, that looks pretty cool. It does. I wish it wasn't the episode before the end that we're introduced to this as a concept, though. I actually find this Demon God thing much more fascinating than most of the Peach family stuff. In all I honesty. agree. And I, I'm baffled as to why we're only just learning about this entity that they worship here. Yeah, because it, ma it makes them and their, their cannibalistic ways feel a little bit more... <sighs> it makes it feel a bit more throwaway. Yeah, throw away. I, I don't and, want to say it, pointless it because go... it, it's had its own value in and of itself, if that's what we're going to focus on. But it kind of feels like, no, there's a bigger bad here and it's this this god they worship. and It feels like we spent too much time on the cannibalism Yeah, if, it, if it's all about this. And again, there's a couple of things in this episode that kind of are gag-worthy in terms of being disgusting. Uh, eating a centipede, for example, uh, yep, yep. being one of them. I think even during the weakest parts, you know, we're saying all oh, some of its abstract imagery and stuff, mm. it still had the ability, some of that stuff has been pretty gross. Oh yeah, it's always been good at being gross. Yeah. It's it's the hasn't one th got the, it hasn't got the context to back it up. It's the one thing that's been consistently good at, uh, and then some of the bigger moments. I think Alison, I mean, I see what they're doing with Alison Zoe, the, like, you know, Alice, who seemed like the more put together ones, actually falling more into the trap, because uh, you know, her fear of getting schizophrenic, her fear of her mother, and losing a, the, her mother, like, she didn't really, they didn't really have a father seemingly at that age, but they had their mother, she went crazy, and that lost their sense of, like, having a, you know, a stable parent, who, someone who supports them, which is why yeah. now it's so tempting to just sort of be embraced by the Peach family and have him look after her, like... Yeah, and, and also, doing. she's very afraid of who she is, because yeah. she doesn't know whether or not she was going to snap, whereas, you know, there's always a bit more uh, self-accepting, I guess. I guess, yeah. Because well, the whole thing is she, she, like, after they've done the whole ceremony to take the centipede, which represents the schizophrenia, although I'm, I'm willing to go as far as to say it represents just humanity in general, schizophrenia is just part of that because there's always a risk that everyone's going to get sick and ill and have various conditions. Oh, yeah. And, you know, sure, taking that out makes you safer, but I arguably it's losing your humanity. So, I, and obviously the fact that Alice doesn't care about Izzy, the little girl who the Peach family are sacrificing to this god, but Zoe does. Zoe takes the centipede and eats it because she wants her humanity back. Like, the, like I see what they're doing there. It's just, I don't know. It's just... It's just missing something, isn't it? I, I, think, most of, I think most of this episode and the last episode have very much suffered from a lot of it is just wandering around the dreamland that has no rules and therefore is hard to get kind of, you know, a solid footing on and, and engage And even with. more riddles. Even more riddles. Um, people know I love rules, and obviously, yeah, you can have things that, because e even, even when things go bad in Silent Hill, the video game, or e or even in, um, uh, like, the Insidious movies, when they go into the other, which is, like, the sort of the, the afterlife sort of dimension, uh, 
there's still a kind of a feeling of rules. There's still a feeling of this is how we got here. This is how we can get back. Uh, things are still kind of tangible. Here's the thing for me. I'm not as firmly into rules as you are. <laughs> uh, and uh, like, so I, I can really love things when things get really abstract and just kind of go with it. But there's always going to be a point. Whereas here, it kind of just feels like some of it is just to kill time. I need an anchor. Even in Twin Peaks, when da- or in anything David Lynch, when David Lynch is going full David Lynch, you get the feeling there's that, there's, 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 there's something behind there. There are rules, but they're not telling us what the rules are, but you can sense they're there. And that's what part of the fun of David Lynch is, is sitting down and figuring out what the hell's going on. But yeah. it's there. You can actually figure it out. And while I think you can, obviously, like I say, we get the gist of what the story's doing. I think there's things like the fact that Izzy can just hide in the walls and it's kind of like this magic aid. Yeah, thing. just just because. Just because, yeah. It just it feels like things are just the word you used there was throwaway. I feel like a lot of the things that can happen in this place are just random ideas the writers had because they thought it would be cool, rather than because it ties into something or because it feels like it fits the world. Or a lot of it goes, hey, wouldn't this look cool if we could do this? Yeah, and they went, yeah, let's do it. Uh, so I think in terms of the story, this is easily the weakest one of the three seasons. Um, um, cause it's, it's, mm. I think as we're getting towards you know near the end game, and we're introducing the the coolest thing at, potentially far too late, it's it's, it's kind of buckling under because you know it was, it, there was potential there for the first few episodes, and then we went through the door. It became abstract. I mean, even, even things that it set up in the first episode, like you know that we weren't super into, like because it felt a bit derivative of season mm. one, like the Meat Man, kind of hasn't paid off to anything as of yet. No, he's just kind of, kind of there. there every so often. I, I think that's the other criticism as well. I feel like I was hoping it would grow out of it, but I still kind of feel like it still kind of got like elements of both the first two seasons. The Meat Man's kind of like the Tooth Child. We're dealing with children being like sacrificed and like stuff like that from season one. Uh, season two, we have a magic house that kind of appears and like you know just kind of like the staircase yeah. and going to the house. I'm, I'm not sure if I said it before, but it kind of feels like a greatest hits. Which is bizarre. It's season three. He don't do yeah. the greatest hits of the first two seasons. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not down on the show in the sense that I'm not looking forward to season four because fresh start. The, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to give it the chance. There's no reason why season four can't come in and do something completely different. It's just really strange to me how this feels like. It feels like season one and two adding with some disgusting cannibalism stuff to add in there because it's one of the things i noticed that even when we're just at the table eating and even though they're telling us it's human meat like it's not really it doesn't really matter uh but just the way they're eating it like they're just still like you know it's hanging out of their mouth a little bit they have to slither it Mm. up and just just a little bit to make it just disgusting enough um and yeah i can't help but feel that you know joseph getting scared that the the sacrifice is not there because because Zoe's went and like rescued Izzy, like him getting scared and going and like promising his God that he will he will deliver the kid. Uh, that should have came earlier to to build up that, this threat. Yeah, no, that's probably the most interesting thing we've had yet. Is mm. oh no, okay, these guys they're scared of something bigger. But okay, there's only one episode left to deal with that now. Yeah, I think if we got the impression throughout the entire show that he's doing whatever he's doing because he's scared of something, that might have worked quite well because we'd be theorising what he's scared of all season. But instead, even in this episode, like the first hint we get of anything that he's scared of, and it's not even scared of, it's just it's when his wife snagging him. You know, he's like, hey, like, yeah, you have not, to pay attention. What we need. Yeah. We, need that, we need that girl. Like, you know, and she even says, oh, you're too confident. And he is super confident. He's never felt at all like he's worried about anything. And then we get to the final scene, and that's when he finally gets scared. I, I genuinely think it's a real problem that before this episode, I had no idea there was something bigger. Not even an inkling that there was something bigger than them. I mean, there was imagery of it. You could see it in some of the sort of the abstract stuff last episode. But yeah, there wasn't right. like a concrete. But because, it, because everything was so abstract, it felt like just imagery. It didn't feel like there was it's actually just, yeah, something it's just, there. It's just part of the horrors of this world they're in, not right. directly tied to the plot it, it's, it's weird, because I feel like there's been too much going on in this season like you know that we've had the the real world plot which we'll get to you know louise and luke will get to that mm-hmm. That that's kind of got more than time than i expected uh, given the first couple of episodes uh we've had you know the, the sisters and their relationship we've had the meat eating we've had the meat child and now we're actually getting you know something more again 
Uh, it just feels like okay, and 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 now you already said the 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 children, the sacrifice. There's but just here, so much. But here's the thing, though. I I I think you're telling me there's too much. At the same time, it feels like these last two episodes didn't have enough to actually do. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I don't get it. <laughs> it it's this this weird contradiction. It both has too much story for the six episodes, but at the same time, a couple of the episodes at least have felt like they have nothing to actually do for I, I chunks think, of the episodes. I think it's a case of they've got too many ideas but not enough plot. So even in those episodes where like, they're, they're just kind of cycling through little snippets of the ideas, but we don't get enough of anything to really feel meaningful. And then they kind of just pad the time and go, okay, we'll, we'll check in with that at the end. We'll, we'll close that off. Yeah, episode two and three were, were, were pretty good. They weren't as good as seasons one and two, but it was definitely the most coherent and like sort of strongly like uh, scripted the show has been yeah. in terms of it was presented as ideas you know we had the whole the, the spidery thing chasing you know Alice around the hospital was really cool and it, was it, great, know, yeah. and it meant something for the character um, and there is I mean I like the idea that like it kind of flips and that, that uh, Zoe's now the one who's kind of level headed and she's like trying to save her sister like it's kind of nice that it's flipped like there's yeah, potential I, I like in that, that idea perfectly well uh, because you know the idea that Alice's fears was crippling her and you know now she now the other it's, sister it's the has case to... it, it's again it's this idea of what if is, is what has paralyzed her so, mm. and you know she has to learn to get over that and be like okay well I mean, know, everyone ha- has to go through that there's always a chance for everyone like you said yeah they basically have that scene in this episode where she says oh like uh, i think the analogy at one point is oh I'm, I'm on a burning building but if i jump off i know someone will catch me uh, but earlier on she also has an analogy like oh i'm so scared of this but at least here i don't have to worry and so he's like, yeah, that's like saying like, if you're scared of you're getting disfigured that you just choose to cut off your own face at one point, just so the fear's gone. <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about it anymore because you've already done it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, which, you know, uh, again, there's nothing wrong with the ideas per se. It's just... It's no, I think, I think it has had really good ideas in terms of what, it, what its core focus is. It just doesn't quite know how to present them properly. Need another rewrite. Maybe need to get rid of one or two things. I do like the demon children. Like, uh, there's a few things in, with them in this one. We see one of them gets gets taken by the the god thing at the end. But I did like the opening shot over the uh, the title screen where it's just the demon mm. child's watching Alice sleep. That, yeah, that was I mean the the demon child with the, the you know the the meat tenderizer in like the first episode is is a standout moment for me. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, and then. I do think I, I like the idea of the the other brother uh, Aldous, you know, going around with two of the demon kids. Uh, on the outside mm. world, that's that's an interesting visual. Um, unfortunately, the the real life stuff or the real world stuff outside the the the, the house world isn't flawless either. This episode, I feel like, so so Luke's alive. Luke is barely you know he missed an artery, artery so he's he's fine and he's being stitched up. Well, he's just stitching him up, and his dad goes with Aldis to, to prove that he's like sort of, you know, you know, the, you know, family for family, he killed your son, so I killed my son, or your brother, so my son, and you know, we're even now, he's that scared. And, you know, then he's, he, you know, he comes by the house, and he kills the kills Aldis and the, the demon kids, and he's there, and they have the standoff, and he looks like, so I did what I had to do, but I'll, I'll be on your side now, I'll help you, blah, 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 and all I can think is, there's nothing you could do that'll make you remotely redeemable after you've slit your son's throat. <laughs> Yeah, and also I really don't like that he's alive. I know we said this last yeah. week that if he's alive after this, it cheapens that moment. It no, it does, um, and he, it's just like if you wanted us to make us believe that he was so scared that he would rather kill his son than do anything else, then you know, slip him some pills. You know, do do something that's kind of peaceful. He took mm. him out to a ditch, made him dig a grave, and then slit his throat. And then said, oh, it was quick. It was quicker than what they'd have done. Yeah, which, of course, he's he's lying there in pain right now. He can't speak. Yeah. He's having to write down, you know, random letters, just, you know, simple questions so he can respond to them. Um, yeah. And his father, once again, and I'll, again, I kind of like the idea here, the message that he's telling, like, hey, you want to help everyone, and you can't do that. You just have to look out for your own. Uh, you know, basically the, the not the hero speech, the opposite of yeah. the hero speech. I don't want to say the anti-hero speech because an anti-hero is a thing. It's it's the it's the Man of Steel Pa Kent. <laughs> it is. And, but that, that's Clark Kent and Luke says, nah, screw this and just shoots his dad. <laughs> yeah. uh, which, not fitting for Superman either, admittedly, but still, different. Um, 
tracks for this. And it's a weird moment because on the one hand I'm like, okay, I'm glad he is like standing up against like this this doubt and this like shame and this like fear that his father has, but also he wants to help people and his response is to just kill his father to do it. Yeah, honestly, I'm really not feeling this whole plot right now. Like, I don't understand quite why we're spending so much time with these side characters at this point. Uh, obviously, they're going to converge, right? They have to. They have to, sure, but uh, probably presumably because they're just going to be on a vendetta to take out the rest of the family at this point, though, right? Um. Yeah. Oh, I'll be about saving Izzy, I, I imagine, or saving Alice. You know, there'll be. Yeah. There'll be that. But it, it feels like. Okay, we've spent a lot of time with them now, and I don't know. I'm not really f- feeling it. Well, I, I think it's just it'll be it'll be setting up Luke's character for whatever he's going to do. Uh, yeah. Next episode. That that's kind of the point. It's, it's... I, I just really wish they'd slit his throat and and because now I'm like, well, you know, I, I kind of prefer if he was dead. Clarify that. What do you mean by that? I, I wish. They no, I don't, say... I, hold on. I, mean, I know what yeah, you yeah. mean. I'm saying yeah, yeah. crap after because that just sounds like you want him to be dead, regardless. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It, it, from that moment, I wish instead of killing him by slitting his throat, I wish his father had taken a different route, one that wasn't so over the top, I guess. Yeah, it feels like it was done for shock value, and now that he's not dead, it feels like it's just it's just a cheap moment because it was he's not just actually a cliffhanger dead. for the sake of a cliffhanger. Yeah. Whereas. You know, you suggested um, why didn't you give him pills? You know, because it'd be like a you know a, a softer way. That you, all right? You can go in and pump his stomach. I'll, I'll buy that a lot more than oh, he's slitting the throat, and you know he's got he's in a grave and covered in dirt. But uh, he's fine. You just can't speak now. Yeah, uh. I mean, I guess thematically you could say, oh, he he took away his ability to speak, just kind of like he's been doing that his whole life by taking away his ability to speak out for the things he believes in and. You know, you silenced them again. Like, I think there's again there's thematic things. I can I can see them in the writers' room being like, "This is this I, what I this get, means." Yeah, I, I get what they get, and it's just not working, is it? No, it's murky. It's murky. I, I don't know. I, 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 this episode feel like a bit of a muddied mess to me. The last one did as well to a point. Um, <laughs> it's unfortunate. It's, it's just it's so weird how quickly uh, a show can fall in a six episode season. Uh, you know, we're, we're probably at our highest point. You know, in episode three, and we're all excited. She's opened the door. Little did we know that opening that door was going to be the the door opening to everything being kind of shitty. Yeah. Uh, or that's maybe that's a bit harsh, but yeah, it really feels like she got to the top of the stairs, and then there wasn't actually anything at the top. She just fell off. It's kind of how it feels. Yep. That's uh. So no, I mean, I, I hate to be. Uh, I, I I hate to. I hate being this negative when it's something that started off with more promise and something that's went downhill. And, and, and do you know what's the real problem as well? Next episode could be great, but it'll be like, yeah, okay, even if it's delivering, because the back half of this season of the story has not been, you know, delivering the beats that I need, it'll likely feel hollow, even if they're the right beats in the last episode. Hmm. I... I... It's funny because I really like the tone that the Peach family brought in the second episode. I, lo- I love the the whole the advert at the start of the episode. Yeah, I, I, I like the Robert the, Peach the quirky around. Americana thing. Yeah, yeah, that that basically, yeah, that that southern quirky, you know, uh, white picket fence family, but they happen to be cannibals. I like that because it's taking the whole Texas Chainsaw thing, but it's putting it in a very kind of like the 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 opposite setting, the the pretty idealistic yeah. dream life setting. As opposed to the grimy, you know, meat shack mm. in the in Texas, <laughs> um, and I like that vibe. But honestly, ever since we got to the house in episode four uh, and then five, they've been thoroughly uninteresting, and it it hurts as well that the most interesting one, Robert, was killed by the end of episode three. Uh, yeah, do, do you know what does hurt as well as again to go back to you know the the god that was introduced is mm. so much more fascinating as a concept. I feel like okay, it looks we cool just as spent- well. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. We just spent two episodes, you know, about 70% of, sat in a house with all these characters talking. And no hint of this thing, really, until the end. You know, n- nothing from this thing until the end of that. That, that, you know, that could have been brought up quite early, even if it was last episode. Earlier last episode. That's Okay, that's half a season to play with this thing, then. Honestly, yeah, honestly, if you, if you combine this episode and last episode into one, I think it works better, because... You have the mystery of the door and what's behind the door, right? Yeah. You condense everything from this episode and last episode into one. 
it cuts out a lot of the the fluff the abstract nonsense yeah and just goes through the beats of both episodes in one you know 42 minute episode i feel like that might fix a lot of the problems it may not be still be perfect but it may fix a lot of the problems we've had no i think you're right i think the 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 the, 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 yeah the, the real thing we've stumbled on here then is they've got an episode too many which is insane when you only have six. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, though. We don't actually want them to take away an episode. We want them to have more time with the, the gods. So I'd still want six. I just want... No, I, I would as yeah. well. But in terms of what they've actually got, assuming that they didn't have any other ideas and mm. that, you know, that this last episode is exactly what it has to be, that would mean that you know this should have just been five episodes, essentially. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you'd have to change the look stuff quite a bit. Maybe this fella tries to kill him, he fails in a more yeah, simple way, yeah. not not a slit the throat way. And, you know, we, we get to kind of the same point through, yeah. you know, whatever. But I, I don't know. This is, this is, this is so, yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame that we're feeling this down on it. But uh, we'll be back next week for the finale. We'll, we'll finish it off and see how they, they wrap it up uh, and see if, it, see if it upticks in any way. Uh, with a bit of luck, maybe the there's more god stuff. I don't think there will be though. I think the god's going to be more of an off-camera thing, and it'll mostly so. be Peach getting obsessive because he's trying to fix the the problem. I I think it's more now that the god is just a threat as to mm. why you know why why he's doing this, and that's kind of a shame because the the god's more interesting. Hmm. All right, so that's Shell Zero, episode five. Let us know what you think of this one in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzz TV. There's a link to that in the description, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Uh, keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?